title says and mike is not her experience with kyphoplasty you know vertebral compression fractures beyond a point the indication is for balloon kyphoplasty and it becomes difficult to identify these pedicles in obese patients with vertebra plana with uh, deformities and that is where the role of robotic navigation comes in placing the guide wires and jamshedi needles under robotic arm guidance and this has become a part of our workflow now and it aids in detect directing the cement filling exactly towards the fracture area either towards the superior or inferior end plates with 100% accuracy like in this case which we have directed towards the inferior end plate in the ap view and in the lateral view there is no cement leak this 63 year old female with t12 compression fracture poorly visualized pedicles on fluoroscopy due to obesity and deformity robotic assistance was used in planning guide wire trajectories and once they placed we trocars were threaded over the guide wires and the kyphoplasty balloon was inflated creating space for the cement restoring the height post operative fluoro and o arm scans revealed well placed bone cement with minimal leak in the canal despite breach in the posterior vertebral wall seen on the pre op o arm scan 66 year old female with insufficiency fracture of sacrum mri revealed persistence of edema even 6 weeks after onset of pain and thus a decision was taken to operate on this patient we do, did take two short axis trajectories for this procedure double balloon kyphoplasty and 9 ml of bone cement was injected into fractured sacrum and the patient was mobilized 2 hours after the procedure pain free and this we have actually published in indian spine journal accepted i think it will get published any time this month in obese patients with osteoporosis and in patients with spinal deformity accurate visualization of spinal pedicles can be challenging and robotic assistance will ensure that there is no inverted inadvertent breach of pedicle during the trocar insection and in this these cases wherein there is no force required to pass the pedicle screws you don't need a anchor pin and this is another case of a 22 year old male presented 3 weeks following motor vehicle accident open pelvic fracture which was temporarily stabilized with an external fixator eventually because of vascular injury and degloving injury they did a external hemipelvectomy on the left side a spine consult was sought for the right sided vertical sacral fracture denis type 2 a decision was taken to fix the fracture using percutaneous iliosacral screws open surgery was impossible with the raw wound on the left side the patient was positioned on a radiolucent fracture table with distal femoral skeletal traction used for fracture reduction robot was mounted on the proximal femur radiographs confirmed the reduction of the fracture before the oam registration we did the fov40 to visualize the entire ilium and both the femoral heads images were sent to the workstation where two iliosacral screws were planted using ilium to s1 bony corridors the 3 mm feather touch uh, feather touch drill was 30 mm long like in s2 lr iliac screws and doesn't cross the si joint we used 4 mm tap to cross the si joint and then followed up, followed it up by a 6 mm tap to cross till the length that is required and we passed two 6.5 into 90 mm partially threaded cancellous screws along the guide wires crossing the fracture causing the fracture compression using lag effect post procedure 3d ct the 3d oam images show accurate placement of screws with a good lag effect at the fracture site post op radiographs inlet outlet and ap views showing perfect position of the screws and a good anatomical restoration of sacral fracture another traumatic pelvic fracture with femoral fracture ortho placed x fix and femoral nailing spine consult for sacral fracture 
robotic assisted iliosacral screws planned, CT showed vertical displaced sacral fracture, fracture reduced with the help of distal femoral pin, trendlin position, robot mounted on the femur, intraoperative fluoroscopy confirmed fracture reduction, a percutaneous incision, dilator sleeve to the bone, a feather touch drill used to create an entry and the 4 mm all tip tap is used to drill the trajectory. Two 6.5 into 100 mm screws were used to fix the fracture here. It is a little longish video. And post operative scans revealed safe implant placement and good reduction of the fracture. Lag effect also is seen. Fra outlet view showing well placed screws, AP view showing reduced fracture. All posterior, now I will come to the cervical spine. I think there are a lot of neurosurgeons around. So, my experience with we did fix the neck rigidly using the Mayfield tongs which come with the radiolucent table. <coughs> 56 year old male with cervical myelopathy planned for C3 to 7 laminectomy and C3 to 6 lateral mass and C7 pedicle screws. Subsequently, we used robotic arm to guide the drilling of trajectories of lateral mass first. The robotic arm was kept at a height of 170 mm, the length of the robotic drill that is 30 mm and the length of the short sleeve is 160 mm, so that it does not go beyond 20 millimeters. The average length of the lateral mass is 16 to 18, so we do not go beyond 20 mm. The setup prevents drill from plunging anteriorly. The lack of cervical spine specific instrumentation means we cannot visualize the tap and the screw on the navigation while you are doing, only the drill you can drill. The post operative radiograph showed well positioned implants. This is a 35 year old male with cervical myelopathy, progressive weakness of all four limbs. He had a clipple flail syndrome, failed instrumentation twice elsewhere with progressive weakness of all four limbs. But he underwent two surgeries wherein once implant was put and removed because of a vascular injury and second time he developed neuro, neurological complication and they had to remove the implants. And these were the flexion extension x-rays and complex 3D anatomy showing site of previous laminectomy and screw hole in the previous implant, the third image. There is also absence of right C1 arch and fusion of C23. MRI showing cord compression at C23 and C34, they have done a laminectomy below that. He was operated twice and when the second revision was attempted, they were unable to intubate the patient as well as and they had to abandon the procedure. Our dedicated spine anesthesia team was able to rise up to the challenge. Scan and plan workflow was used in lateral mass screws were planned and we did complete positioning of lateral mass screws in C2, C3, C4 and fusion, post operative radiographs here. 59 year old patient, we got more and more comfortable with lateral mass screws and we thought we will do with pedicle screws next. Again with OPLL and myelopathy, hypertonia in both lower limbs and ataxic gait. Being the first case of our workflow, we excluded the use of robotic arm and focused on utilizing the navigation capabilities of the robot. We used the spinous process pin which later on we gave up because it, it is not very stable. So, planning the trajectories gives visual feedback while using the navigated bar. There was a loss of accuracy after placing the screws on the left side and we bailed out using the lateral mass screws on the right side. <coughs> Post operative scans, one side pedicle screws, one side lateral mass screws and x-rays looked good, clinically patient improved. From there, this is a 70 year old myeloradiculopathy patient with multi-level compression with the OPLL. Cervical pedicle screws were planned C3 to 7. Here only the dilator and the feather touch drill is navigable and the rest of the instrumentation is done under visual guidance. So, we do it open. Not very much open, but we do like this. The drill you can actually see it live going between the spinal canal and the 
vertebral foramen and then you tap and you put the screws and post operative scans revealed well positioned implants, perfect spinal alignment in both coronal and sagittal planes and post op OAM image. The overlapped screws show accurately placed C7 pedicle screws which are right in the plant trajectory. Another 70 year old myelopathy with OPLL, again C3 to 7 laminectomy and pedicle screw instrumentation. You can see both right and left parasagittal sections showing the screws. Perfect positioning and good on OAM. Again 59 year old with myelopathy, cord edema and cervical stenosis from C3 to 7. So, pedicle screws and so another 70 year old with myelopathy with OPLL planned and delivered. So, we have still extended the use this is again one more with pedicle screw instrumentation just to cut the story short we did this is an interesting case of atlanto axial dislocation with basilar invagination and partial occipitalization of atlas and myelopathy due to cord compression. Robotic assisted C2 pedicle screws was placed. Robotic assisted C3 to 4 lateral mass screws were placed and FMD and cervical laminectomy was done post procedure and you can see the OAM images which are showing perfect positioning. X-rays of occipital cervical. Again a 13 year old boy with quadriparesis showing tri following trivial fall showed dystrophic os, or os odontoidium with multiple cervical thoracic vertebral anomalies and three dimensional deformity somewhat scoliosis or whatever. Intraoperative CT scan showed compression of the cord with dystrophic os odontoidium of C1 arch posteriorly unfused with occiput and so, we plan for occiput to C3 fusion with robotic assistance and foramen magnum decompression with C1 to 3 laminectomy and that is what was delivered. Again a 57 year old male with query lytic lesion in the C2 and it showed a definite myroedema in C2 and intraoperative OAM scan showed the lytic lesion in C2 body. We plan two trajectories to take a biopsy percutaneously without opening the spine or the spinal cord and it showed it turned out to be solitary plasma cytoma and patient underwent chemo and radiotherapy. The third generation spine robots capabilities extend beyond placement of pedicle screws in the thoracic and lumbar spine. The current instrumentation can be used for placing pedicle screws in the cervical spine as well as lateral mass screws with robotic assistance. Specifically designed instrumentation might result in wider adoption of third generation spine robot in the posterior spinal surgeries for cervical spine, especially when there are anatomical aberrations and previous surgeries involved. Even anterior cervical spine we did try our luck, we used the Mayfield tongs to hold the head tight, we do not use a pin and this minimizes movement and ensures navigation and accuracy is not lost during surgery. The images from the OAM are transferred to the workstation, they are all inverted upside down. So, we invert it back, but this causes right to left inversion. Then we use the screws with different colors to identify the levels, like here yellow screws are used to mark C5 6 and 7 and blue color for C6. Lateral inversion of the navigated tools is seen due to flipping of the image upside down. This is corrected using the transform tool which allows us to flip the image horizontally. This corrected image ensures the direction of the tool and the orientation of the instruments for the surgeons are in alignment. This is one example 53 year old male history of fall while carrying heavy load unifacetal dislocation with cord compression and we use screws to mark levels to avoid radiation throughout the procedure. Also used passive planar probe intermittently to assess the adequacy of decompression up to the uncovertebral joint and also confirm the midline for implant placement and you can see the nicely placed implants. 
we used it for myelopathy for corpectomy using the navigated drill for burring and patient was mobilized again c56 disc prolapse with left upper limb radiculopathy we used navigated navigation guidance put for placing the disc replacement accurately in the midline again two level disc replacement c56 and c67 we did place the implant under robotic guidance like full capabilities of robotics will definitely extend beyond screw placement it allows the surgeon to get more confidence in understanding all aspects of complex pathologies and perform various procedures more confidently navigation capabilities also ensure safe and adequate real time decompression along with accurate placement of implants we have done 332 now coming to our center's uh, experience 332 surgeries in whatever time 6 months plus 288 thoracolumbar and 42 cervical out of which most of them are degenerative and deformities were 22 fusions and cervical we did more of uh, posterior than anterior some 10 disc replacement and 12 acdfs and remaining were all and two pelvic traumas that i shared so we have implanted 1859 screws from occiput to ilium most of them in the thoracolumbar pedicle screws and s2lr were 22 iliosacral were 4 and cervical spine were 191 pedicle screws 84 and lateral mass screws 99 and 8 to 97 years was the age group that we did and as you see we have used pedicle and lateral mass screws at every level we have used most of the pedicle screws in the lower thoracic but also up to t1 t1 to 12 and all the lumbar vertebrae and s2 lr iliac screws and we did analyze the results by overlapping the screws planned and executed and learning curve we analyzed the first 100 cases with the second 100 cases and there was a learning curve for the or technicians and nurses as reflected by significant reduction in the oam time and radiation dose but for the surgeons there was no no change in the learning curve because of comparable blood loss and time per screw none of the patients had permanent neurological deficits and implants were clinically acceptable with gutspin robins grade 0 and 1 99.8 percent accuracy of screws in summary like miran was saying technique and technology helps but indications and principles of surgery remains unchanged if surgeon doesn't understand this technology is here to hurt us embrace and engage technology responsibly be patient i think for all the youngsters it's better to learn old and new techniques because you don't know when the machine will give away and it is always that patient first attitude which matters the most thank you very much for patient listening